Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and still I rise, a proud member of the Congress of the United States of America, always honored to have this preeminent privilege of standing here in the House of Representatives in this chamber, proud to do so, proud to be an American, one of the persons who likes to stand and sing the national anthem, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. But that's not what makes America great, having Al Green stand for the Pledge of Allegiance or sing the national anthem. The thing that makes America great is that we, members of Congress and other persons of goodwill, will defend the right of those who choose not to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, who choose not to sing the national anthem, nor do they choose to stand when the national anthem is being played. That's the greatness of America, that we can tolerate each other when we have differences. So tonight, I'm proud to be here, Mr. Speaker, proud to stand here and have this privilege. No one could have predicted at my birth that I would be here to give this message tonight. And this is a special message. It has to do with something happening in my congressional district. I have in my hand a copy of an article from the Houston Chronicle the person who is the writer for this particular article is Juhi Verma, a very good writer, I must add. Juhi writes, and this is the style, the caption, the title, if you will, Missouri City to change street name after KKK leader as fight against Confederate themes continue street named after KKK leader, fight against Confederate themes continues. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank Ms. Verma for writing this article because she captures the very essence of what happened. And I'd like to give just a brief recitation, if I may, on some of what I know about this circumstance. I, some years ago, discovered that we had an area in my congressional district in a city known as Missouri City, Texas, an area in Vicksburg Village of Shiloh, a subdivision, a subdivision with some 200 homes or more, a subdivision with more than 1,000 people, a subdivision that had streets with Confederate names. In 2022, 2021, somewhere thereabout, this came to my attention. A subdivision in this day and time with Confederate street names. Someone would say, well, that's not a big deal. Maybe not, but let's explore it. There was a Confederate Drive, Confederate Court, Confederate South Drive, and then, among the many others, Bull Run Court, Stonewall Court, Pickett Place. Among them, there was also a Bedford Forest Drive and a Bedford Forest Court. For edification purposes, Nathan Bedford Forest was the first grand wizard of the KKK. First grand wizard. And for further information, uh, the KKK, for those who may not know, my suspicion is that most who will hear this will know, but the KKK was an organization devoted to suppressing the rights of African Americans. Devoted. And some might say they did a pretty good job over the years of suppressing the rights of African Americans. So we have these streets with the names that I've articulated, 
and some others. But we have these streets, and I took it upon myself to engage with mayor and council about changing the names. This is when I discovered that to change the names, you had to have at least 90% of the residents to sign off on it. 9%, 90%. Well, 90% is a good number, but it's not a good number if you're trying to get a, the name of a street changed, I found because it was most difficult to get it done. I went out personally and talked to people about getting the names changed. And it was very difficult to say the very least, and I won't say impossible, but we didn't get any names changed at the 90% level. We got a new mayor and council, a mayor and council with persons who were a little bit more sensitive to the issue. A council member, Boney, a council member who is a historian, lay historian, and who, who understood what these names meant. A council member who decided that he was going to do something about this. And I'm proud to say that council member Jeff Boney was able to lower the threshold from 90% to 70%. And at the 70% threshold, we were able to get some names changed. We had a couple living in the neighborhood, the Gilbos. Uh, they were out front in getting names changed. Now let's just reflect for a moment before I continue with the Gilbos and others in the neighborhood on this. One of the chief proponents of leaving the names as they were was a person of African ancestry. A person of African ancestry. I personally talked to this person, tried to convince the person that it would be appropriate to get names that would be more inclusive, as Ms. Verma has mentioned in her article. And the person said to me, the people shouldn't have bought the land. They knew what the name was when they bought it, and they shouldn't have bought homes in that neighborhood. I choose not to live in a neighborhood that has names, streets with Confederate names. I choose not to live in a city that has streets with Confederate names. I choose not to live in a country that has streets with Confederate names. That's why I am doing what I can to change these names. I don't think we ought to have a street, especially one with people of color, I would imagine all people of goodwill would agree that we ought not have a street named after the first grand wizard of the KKK. But everybody's entitled to their opinion. And we have worked through the process with Council Member Boney, who took the lead to lower the threshold so that we could change some names. Confederate Drive, under his leadership, and with the aid and assistance of the residents, especially the Gilbos, Rhonda and Bo, the Confederate Drive Street was changed to Prosperity Drive. That's where they live now. They didn't want to live on Confederate Drive. Confederate Court to Prosperity Court. Confederate South Drive to Prosperity South Drive. I thought that after the name change from Confederate to Prosperity, I thought that after that name change, we would have little difficulty changing the name from Bedford Forest Court and Bedford Forest Drive to some other names. I thought that there would be little challenge to these two with a 70% threshold. I thought that people would gladly change the names. 
regardless of their hue, regardless of their station in life. It just seemed to me that in the United States of America, liberty and justice for all, an inclusive country, the country I love, where I say the Pledge of Allegiance, sing the national anthem. I just thought that it would be relatively simple to move on these streets with this name. How wrong I was. <laughs> How wrong I was. After much work, time, energy, and effort, the name Nathan Bedford Forrest, actually Bedford Forrest, Nathan wasn't there, was not removed. Thank God for Council Member Boney. He went back to the council, and the council had to lower the threshold to 60%. And it was only after we lowered the threshold, I say we, it was the city council and, and the mayor in Missouri City, Texas. Um, the mayor's name is Alicat. By the way, he is of Indian ancestry, born in India. Mayor in Missouri City, Texas. That's a wonderful thing to, to know that we can have, appreciate, and celebrate this level of diversity. But with that mayor and council, it was lowered to 60%. And as a result, the Pearsons, uh, Rhonda and Angie, they don't have to live on a street now that bears the name Bedford Forest. That name will change on August the 7th of this year it will become Liberty Way. Liberty Way Drive is a street that they will live on, and there's a Liberty Way court. But it will become Liberty Way. Inclusive speaks to some of, something associated with the founding principle of this country, liberty, justice for all, and the Pledge of Allegiance. That's a wonderful thing to see occurring. And perhaps we'll get to Bull Run Court, Stonewall Court, and some others. Pickett Place, Confederate General Pickett. Well, maybe we can get to these in the near future. But I'm proud of what has been done. And I want to commend Council Member Boney. I want to commend the Pearsons. I want to commend all of the persons who were associated with these endeavors, the Gilbos, for what they have done to bring a sense of justice to the people who live in this neighborhood. But there is something more sinister that has taken place that I want to call to your attention with reference to this. And the best way to explain it is to tell you about my flight that I took in from Houston to Washington, D.C. I fly over 100 times a year. On this occasion, a couple of weeks ago, I, um, I saw a movie while I was on the plane. It was a movie that was heart-wrenching for me, a movie about a young man who was born to a father who was a wealthy plantation owner and a mother who was a slave. The name of the movie is Chevalier. I won't spoil it for you. I'm going to go right to the gravamen of my message, the heart of this. The essence of it is this. He was talking to his mother, and they were talking about how evil had caused some physical harm. I won't spoil the movie for you because I think that it's worthy of seeing. But they were talking about how evil had caused this harm, physical harm. And his mother said to him, she reminded him, yes, the, the physical harm, but it's really the evil that has impacted our minds. 
that she called to his attention. How evil had caused people to accept things that were unacceptable to other people. Unacceptable to the masses, but evil can teach you to accept things. There were people who accepted the notion that this was all right to live on a street named after the first grand wizard of the KKK. Evil can do this. It can convince you that what others would not accept and what you would not accept for them, you will accept for yourself. This gets back to the person that I told you of African ancestry, who was one of the chief proponents of maintaining the names. Convinced that it was okay for people of African ancestry to live on a street named after the first grand wizard of the KKK, but was not convinced I assure you that he or would have anyone live on a street that had a name associated with the Third Reich. I wouldn't live on a street with a name associated with the Third Reich. I would dare say that there are few people in Congress, there may be one, but I can't imagine there being one who would tolerate it. Yet. People who will tolerate living on a street who happen to be of African ancestry will tolerate living on a street named after a grand wizard of the KKK would not tolerate living on a street or having anyone else living on a street named after someone associated with the Third Reich. This is the the essence of what this mother was conveying to her son about the evils and how they can impact the mind. Evil can have a sinister impact on the mind. And unfortunately, in this country, the country I love, for too long we have allowed ourselves to be disrespected, our ancestors to be disrespected, we have allowed the enslavers to be revered and the enslaved to be reviled. Our minds have been corrupted to the extent that we find it acceptable to send our children to a Lehigh school named after a Confederate general, but would not dare send our children to a high school named after someone associated with the Third Reich. I wouldn't have a child go to one. Our minds have been corrupted. We, we tolerate living in a country where we preach liberty and justice for all, a country founded to a certain extent on the principle of persons having inalienable rights. I think the way it's stated in the Constitution is unalienable but inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet we, many people of color, accept what we would not accept for others under other circumstances. I marvel at how we have arrived in the year 2023, and we have a building on the campus, on this campus, named after a person who was a white supremacist, a person who fought against anti-lynching laws, a person who fought integration, a person who was a segregationist. And we have a building named after this person. And we, people of color, tolerate it. I'm a one-person protest. I do not go in the building unless I'm going there to protest. And of course, I'm talking about the Russell office building. Richard Russell is the person of whom I speak, the person who 
was one of the co-authors of the Southern Manifesto. Richard Russell. The Senate has a building named after Richard Russell. I have here what we refer to as the conscious agenda. The third item on this agenda is to remove Richard Russell's name. Taxpayer dollars, my dollars, taxpayer dollars ought not be on the name of a building that would honor a bigot and a racist. Richard Russell. And here is the amazing thing about this, other than the fact that we have persons of African ancestry who will accept it, who could, who could do something about it, but accept it. Here's the amazing thing. The United States Senate changed the names on military bases. Changed the names of Confederate generals, removed them in concert with the House and the signature of the president. We did it. We changed the names. The same Senate that has changed the names on these military bases named after and in honor of Confederate generals, that same Senate will not take Richard Russell's name off of the Russell Senate office building. Same Senate. Shows the lack of respect. The Senate ought to be ashamed. The building itself is a symbol of shame. I marvel at how this has been so accepted that it's commonplace. People just walk in and out of the building like it's any other building. The Richard Russell office building. The same Senate that took the names off of these Confederate bases, names on military bases, named after Confederate soldiers, usually generals. The same Senate has not removed this name. Now, the question becomes why? Here's what I have been told. I have been told that the Senate can't agree on another name. So this is why the Senate will not remove the name that is offensive to me and many of my friends and relatives, say they can't agree on a name. Well, I have the solution. Let it revert to the name that it had before it became Richard Russell. Let it revert to the old Senate office building and then choose any name you want. Take as much time as you need, but you can change the name. I beg the Senate. And I demand of the Senate that you do not just the right thing, but do the righteous thing and remove Richard Russell's name from this office building, just as you've done it for military bases around the country. This would be the honorable thing to do. Members of the Senate, you dishonor the flag when you do this. Liberty and justice for all. You dishonor the anthem. Stand up for justice. Stand up for people of color who are offended by this name. I'm grateful for the time. I want the persons who make it possible for me to have the time to know that I appreciate them. And I also want people to know that I love my country. And I love it enough to want to see the best of it and remove the notion that we can tolerate this level of injustice being perpetrated on a daily basis by people who have the power to change it almost overnight. I thank you for the time, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back.